So guys, unfortunately we couldn't get out to Cova this year to run our annual Stormco trip. We're a bit sad about that, but we've put together this awesome online virtual Stormco for you. We've had fun filming it, haven't we, Elijah? Yeah, we really have, you know, we've, we've, we've done the usual songs, the usual puppets, uh, we've been doing the story time, we've done everything that we usually do out in Kids Club in Cova, put it in a video and send it out there to you guys to enjoy while we're not there with you. We've even done a little bit more, some of the puppets are a bit special and yeah. a few other things. The whole team's here with us, and we've got a message for you guys out there. You ready guys? Three, two, one. Welcome to Virtual Storm Code 2020! sing some songs now. Uh, so feel free to jump up and down, get involved and sing along.
Hey guys, um, we're actually going to be singing our theme song for the week. It's called God is Our Rock. And now you probably haven't heard this song before and that's because it was specially written for this week's Stormco. So we hope you guys enjoy it and sing along with us. I'm Agent Pork. And I'm Agent Piglet. And, and together, together we are the Three Little Pigs. I, Dr. Fear, have discovered the secret identities of the Three Little Pigs. I'm coming for you, secret agents. Guys! Guys, where are you? Our identities have been compromised. What? Dr. Evil knows who we are. We need to get out of here. Quick, there might be somebody over here that can help us. Agents, look up there. Maybe she can help us hide from Dr. Fear. Let's go! <sighs> miss, miss! You must be Little Red Riding Hood. Yeah, that's me. Okay, well, we're on the run from Dr. Fear and we need some place to hide. Well, you're welcome to hide in my show house if you want. Yes, please, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh no! Here she comes! Quick, hide! Three little pigs, I know you're in there and I'll blow this house down with my blower aid of 4,000! Whoa! Whoa! Ah! 
Quick, we have to go before she catches us. Run. Wow, that was an amazing drama. Make sure you tune in tomorrow to see what happens next. Well, boys and girls, it's story time. Let's listen to today's story. Once, in a tiny town called Kurumbong, in the middle of nowhere, lived a young boy named Tommy. Now, Tommy was the youngest of 11 siblings, all of them older brothers. And this meant that despite growing older and a little bit taller, people still treated him like a little boy. And Tommy was determined not to let them call him little anymore. That's it, April. I can't take it anymore. Everyone in this town is still calling me little Tommy. And I turned 10 last week. I'm practically an adult. Oh, Tommy, is it really that bad? Everyone knows you're not a kid anymore. You don't understand. I have to prove myself. I need to do something that is so amazing that no one will ever call me little Tommy ever again. But what could I do? Tame a lion? Oh, that won't work. There are no lions in Hurumbong. Maybe I could fly. No, that's physically impossible. Oh, I know. I will be the strongest man alive. How is that idea better than the others? It's crazy. Crazy? No way. I can prove that I'm the strongest man alive by, um, hiking up the Watergate Mountains with a whole pack full of rocks on my back and I will never be made fun of again. So Tommy went out early the next morning and selected as many stones as he could find. And with each new stone he dropped into his pack, the weight on his back began to get heavier and heavier. While it was okay for the first few kilometers, it soon became incredibly heavy. And April, who had come along for support, was starting to get concerned. Tommy, are you okay there? You're looking a little green. I'm fine. I could do this for hours. If you're sure. But how about I take some of the rocks from your bag and put them in mine? No one will know and you can put them back in when you're ready. While Tommy wanted to prove himself, he knew that the rocks were too heavy a burden to carry alone. And so April and Tommy together managed to hike all the way to the top and back. But just before reaching the town, Tommy put all the rocks back in his own bag and walked the last stretch to where the town was waiting with a huge celebration. Did you know that right now you too are carrying a burden? Yours might not be a bag full of rocks, but everyone is carrying something, whether it's guilt or sadness or maybe even loneliness. But just like April, Jesus is with you for your whole life's journey and he wants to take that burden from you. And you don't have to worry about it being too heavy for him because Jesus is the strongest being alive. Are you ready to sing Jesus Got Hips of Lambs? Jesus got heaps of lambs. Jesus got heaps of lambs. They were white as snow. And they were white as snow. And everywhere that Jesus went. Everywhere that Jesus went. The lambs were sure to go. The lambs were sure to go. Singing Sing hallelujah. Hey, hey, hallelujah. Oh, oh, hallelujah. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Jesus died on the cross. Jesus died on the cross. Oh, oh. 
Hey boys and girls, today's craft is armbands, so make sure to get out Craft Pack 1 from your Stormco packs. Alright, hi kids, so today in our craft packs we're going to be making Jesus bracelets. So in your craft pack you should have a piece of string and on one of the ends of your piece of string should be some sticky tape and then you should also have nine beads. Five of them should have letters on them, letters J, two S's, an E and a U. And then you should have four other beads that are just colourful beads. Okay? So what I want you to do is we're going to get this piece of string and on the end that's not got sticky tape, so the other end, we're going to tie a little knot. Watch how I tie the knot. Just make a circle and stick the tail through the loop and pull it tight, just like that. That way when you put your beads onto the string, they're not going to fall off the other end because that would be pretty annoying, right? Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go with our beads and we're going to line them up in the way that we want to go. We're going to spell them. Now, I'm going to spell it. Spelling Jesus, right? So we've got to go J first, then E, then S, then U, and the final S. Now there's a couple of things you could do here. You could put two beads on either end, or to mix it up a little bit, you could put your colourful beads in here. Either way, whatever you do, it looks cool. I'm going to put my two beads on the outside. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get our first bead from one end and we're going to slide it on. And once you've got them in order, you can just slide them right on like that. Just like that. Now the reason we put tape on the end of your strings is so that it's a lot easier for you to be able to slide your beads on. How are we doing there, Kiani? Doing good, how are you doing? I'm good. I think I'm nearly done. I've only got three beads left. Oh wow, you're busy. Are we done? Uh, hang on, one more bead. Alrighty. We're done, we're done, yeah. we're done. We 
we've got them all finished. We've got all our beads on here. Now, what um you'll need now a friend to help you, which is why I have my trusted friend here on here. What you're gonna do is you're gonna put your your arm over your wrist and you're gonna fold it up like this. And then you're gonna get your friend to tie a knot. Just like a little granny knot, not too tight so that you can still get it on and off your hand. And then pull it tight. And once you've got it tight, there you go. You can cut off your ends, because we don't want our ends dangling everywhere. And there we have it. Jesus Christ. Kiani, give me your hand. Alright. Tie it on, not too tight. So you can still get it on and off. Just like that. Easy granny knot. Downy's got small tails on the end of hers because she has a big Thank you. Alright. There we go. And there you have it. There's our Jesus bracelets. Look at that, kids. They're awesome. Bye. We all love balloons. Pastor Darren and Stormy have something special for us today. Oh, good morning, boys and girls. It's really good to see you here. Um, I have Pastor Darren here. He is a really, really good balloon maker. Hi, Stormy. Hi, boys and girls. So, could be with you out there at Cobar, is it? Yeah, Cobar. Okay. Okay, so what are you going to make for us today, Pastor Darren? Well, the idea is that you try and guess what it is, Stormy, and boys and girls out there, see if you can guess what I'm making. Oh, I can do that. So I'm going to inflate a blue balloon all the way to That's the end. That's a pretty blue balloon. It is a lovely light blue balloon. We just plain balloons, so it will go pop sometimes if I twist it and I shape it, it's going to turn into something beautiful. Here we go, the third one. So we have three balloons, Stormy. Do you know I can count to three? Can you count to three? You've got three fingers. One, two, three. Well done. Can you count to three, boys and girls? I'm going to do a pinch twist here at the end. And pinch it again. Second balloon, and pinch the third balloon. Do you have a sister, Stormy? No. You I've don't? got no relatives at all. Oh, right. Well, if you've got a sister, you may have tried this plaiting. Have you ever tried plaiting? I've only got one hand, Pastor Darren. Yeah, one hand? Well, that's right. Well, you can't plait pretty well with one hand. I'm going to plait these three balloons. You ready? Yep. Right over left, left over right, all the way along. Still going. You're real good at plating, Pastor Darren. Thank you. I've had a bit of practice on my daughter's hair. There we go. Now this end, again, pinch it. I don't need that bit. You get rid of it. You ready? Ready, boys and girls? One, two, three. Kaboom! It went pop! That's right. A purposeful pop. And the other one, pinch it. And leave that end there. There it is. It's a work in progress. You know, Stormy, we're all works in progress as God twists and shapes us into his amazing creations. He sure does. That's right. And I'm going to take a bit I made earlier. I'm going to attach these two together right in the middle. A bit out the bottom. Oh, I think I know what it is. Can you guess, boys if and girls? Stormy seems to know. If you turn it up the other way, it's a letter T. Well, yeah, a bit of a crooked T, Stormy, but no, it's not a T. Oh. This is something you might have to go to the ocean for. And that's a long way from Cobar. That is a long way from Cobar. 
That's right, but if you go to the ocean, you might see these. Oh, do ships have them? That's right. Stormy knows, I think ships have them, boys and girls. Have you got it? It's an anchor. That's an anchor, that's right. I understand you've been learning about God is our rock, is that correct? That's correct, that's our theme. That's your theme, well, I thought I'd make an anchor because an anchor on a ship is good if it attaches into the bedrock at the bottom of the ocean and it holds the ship tight. Oh, so it can't float away in the storm. That's right. And I know, boys and girls and Stormy, when storms come in your life, we need an anchor too. Guess who that anchor is? God. God, our rock. So ask God to be the anchor of your life and you can't go wrong. A grandfather and his two grandchildren walked along the rugged coastline. The wind whipped their hair and birds soared in the air. Up ahead, the shape of a lighthouse reached into the sky. Look how tall it is, Grandpa, commented the little girl. The lighthouse stood like a mighty giant, guarding ships against the rocky cliffs, warning them to stay clear and find a safer path. As they neared closer to the lighthouse, the young boy commented, What is that noise, Grandpa? That, my son, is the sound of waves crashing against the cliffs and rocks below. Together, they made their way to the cliff edge and carefully peered over the fence. Violent waves crashed against the rocks and the base of the lighthouse. They sent spray shooting high into the sky. Those are very powerful waves, commented the young boy as he took a step backwards. Indeed they are. How does the lighthouse not fall down? Ah. A very good question. You see, the lighthouse has a very important job to do. It must be able to stand firm through the fiercest storms and weather, so that it can safely guide the ships through to the harbour. It must not crumble or break, even though it is constantly under the pressure of the crashing waves. Yes, but how does it not fall down? The girl questioned again. It has a solid foundation. Her grandfather spoke with a twinkle in his eye. Why don't you go and have a look? For a moment, the young girl and her brother looked puzzled. Then they ran to the base of the lighthouse. It's just sitting on the dirt, replied the boy. Are you sure? Why don't you look deeper? The grandfather motioned to the side of the lighthouse that stood against the edge of the cliff. From there, they could see that the base of the lighthouse extended through the dirt and was attached deeply to the rock below. Now can you see the solid foundation? Can you see why it does not fall down? Yes, yes. replied the children excitedly. It is built on the rock. More than that, it is not just built on the rock, but its foundations are even drilled into the rock. That is why it can stand firm and not fall over in the fiercest of weather. The children gazed at the lighthouse with awe and wonder. They smiled knowing that while ever the lighthouse was attached to the rock, it would continue to stand tall. Well, that brings us to the end of the program for day one of our Storm Co. We've still got two exciting programs left, so make sure you tune in tomorrow to see them.
God is my rock. He will stay strong. I build my life upon his promises. So I will sing and I will dance because I know, I know, I know. 